New pack day. Magispector versus Branded. Now, you don't have an excuse for not reading these Pendulum cards because they don't have an effect on as the spell version, just the monster effect. Let's go. Begin. I'm still not going to read them. Wow. UMC. Folding at the thought of playing against the brand new Magispector, which also got fully unbanned on Kirin. All right. Is that a game one win? Not sure. <laughs> Let's see what happens in the next duel. There can only be one winner. And you're looking at it. Let's go. Oh, UMC had the wrong deck. It is not branded. We are watching Ubel versus Magispector. All right. Yada, the upgraded version of Yada. Interesting. Does this do some battle effect where your opponent can't draw a card? It states that no, it does not do anything like the original Yada. Sure. We have Magispector Yada searching for a Cyclone. Magispector Wind, which is going to be activating to special summon a Magispector from your hand or graveyard, which we are going to Ash. If you attributed... So if it's hand or graveyard, how do we Ash it? I think it had a, a, a deck effect also. Special summon Magispector from your hand or graveyard. If you attributed a monster at activation, you could special summon a Magispector from your deck instead. Oh, okay, so... It could special summon from the hand or grave without tributing, but if you tribute, it summons the deck, thus the Ash Blossom, negate, and then cross out designate, negate the negate. No summon from the, oh, we do summon from the deck now as we summon our Raccoon. Raccoon's gonna add a Magispector card from our deck, the brand new Porcupine. Porcupine special summon if we control a Magispector. Returning the Magispector Wind in the graveyard back onto the field here. Now beyond the Pendulum, we'll search our deck for a Pendulum card. No, it will not because Impermal negates. I don't think so, mate. Cyframe Driver can be discarded for our one for one. That is definitely something. Now, when is the time to max C in the new meta? Well, main phase one, without activating anything, they could summon a Phantom of Ubel using their hand, which will negate your max C. So you might have to maxi in the draw phase, and because of you having to maxi in the draw phase, Cyframe Gear Gamma is going to be a good card to be playing. Let's see, let's see. We have the cross out designate for the maxi. Chain the maxi. Even with a discarded frame driver, we're still disrespecting Gamma. Cross out designate. Negate that maxi mate. I don't think so. All right, all right. Now. Let's make our core plays. We got the Samsar D Lotus, which is a full combo starter. Summon for the deck, a Spirit of Ubel on summon, search and set from our deck, a Nightmare Pain. Nightmare Pain, pop a card to then search our deck for a Grave Squirmer. A Grave Squirmer requires us to have a Fiend on the field. So we now have a Ubel in the field after our Spirit of Ubel was destroyed. We're now gonna special summon the Squirmer, destroy Ubel to summon a Terra Incarnate from the deck. Returning from the graveyard back in the deck for a Phantom of Ubel to negate a monster effect. As we then further link this up into an Unchained Soul of Yama to grab from our deck a Shivara. Now we want to pop a Spirit of Ubel, but did we we lost our Spirit of Ubel because we returned it back in the deck for the Phantom of Ubel. Now we have the Unchained Soul of Anguish here, which could link off with the Beyond the Pendulum. Shivara pop in the Phantom of Ubel to trigger the Yama to reborn from the graveyard, our D Lotus. Now we're gonna link off with the Beyond the Pendulum, making an Unchained Abomination. We could have made a Axis Code Talker instead. To battle we go, 5,000 damage, not quite lethal, but during the end phase, we could set up some disruption and pop that back row card. Sure, sure. Where? Why didn't we return the Terror Incarnate Reborn a Spirit of Ubel? I, I, did we uh, summon the wrong thing? Did we return the wrong thing? Wasn't Terror Incarnate in the graveyard when we were summoning our Phantom of Ubel? All right. Abomination, the end phase get pop. And what we have here is we have negate a monster effect and link off of the special stone monster being our main forms of disruption. Let's get to it. <laughs> End our turn. We have no play. And just like that, finish off this duel. Taking this into game number two. We can't even normal summon a monster because we're going to be forcing the battle phase, swinging into Phantom of Ubel, reflecting battle damage onto us. Nice job, nice job. We got what we got. We have the Yata. Yata into a Magispector Cyclone. Come to me, Magispector Wind. Tribute a Magispector to summon one from the deck. We have the Bunbuku searching for a monster on summon. Porcupine, if we control a Magispector, special summon. Recycle a spell in the graveyard back onto the field. Now we have the brand new Link. 
Newy, new. Magispector, new. Magispector, uh, add from the extra deck back to her hand. Up to two? Okay, add up to two, sure. Set up the pendulum scales and get ready to pendulum summon. What's our end field looking like? I don't know if that link has a disruption on it. Draco Slayer is gonna be searching for a field spell and their spellcaster. So the spellcaster village, which turns off spells. What the heck is that? Majesty's Pegasus? Is that even a floodgate? Well, we'll read that later. Further show Conan into the Ryu. Royal Ryu. Tribute to win monster, special summon a Magispector from your deck? Sure. That's all it does. Summon from your deck. You can only use that effect once per turn. So beyond that, the field spell does nothing else. The QB searching for a Magispector Tempest. All right. Summoning a Kirin. All right. Let's see what this field does exactly. We're flipping up the wind early to special summon a Magispector from the deck. So maybe this is going to be another form of disruption that we should uh, read afterward. Tribute, some for the deck. Okay. Now, uh, that's going to trigger, right? And it's going to be grabbing something. Wait, the Ryu is triggering right now. What the heck is it doing? If a monster is tributed while this card's on the field, you can detach a material from this card. Special summon a level six or lower wind spellcaster from your deck. Isn't that Kirin? Another Kirin? Double Kirin? Okay, Bunbuku add a Magispect. So we're going to chain link block someone from the deck so they cannot Ash Blossom the effect of Ryu. From the deck? Okay, so let's read the Kirin here. Kirin, target a pendulum monster in your monster zone, plus one monster your opponent controls, return them to the hand. You can only use this once per turn. So it is a hard once per turn, so another Kirin would not be good. This card was recently banned and now fully unbanned and only fully unbanned within Master Duel. So we have that as a form of disruption. We also have Tornado. Tribute a Spellcaster, target a monster, banish it, not destroy. So we have two disruption. And then what is this? When a monster would be special summoned, or a monster effect is activated, tribute a win to negate the summon or activation. Triple disruption is what I'm counting so far. And we have effect veiler. Does the Ryu do something else that's considered disruption? No, it does not look like it. Now, all the magic specters I think have the blanket effect of it cannot be targeted by card effects and it cannot be destroyed by card effects. It cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. We're going to negate the dark beckoning beast. We now have a follow-up nightmare pain. We're gonna pop the Spirit of Ubel, grab the Grave Squirmer. Spirit of Ubel summoning a Ubel from the hand, unfortunately, all under max frequency. Grave Squirmer is going to be negated by the Tempest. Negate. All right, so we have the Tornado and the Kirin still. Negate and destroy, but that card can now activate in the Graveyard to Reborn or summon from the hand or from the Grave. We're also gonna banish the Ubel off the field, and we still have Kirin. What? You have a disruption from the hand? During the main phase, if you control a Magic Spectre special... No, 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 that's... Just, okay, it's a quick effect. Porcupine's quick. Sure, sure. Okay. Special summoning the Dark Beckoning Beast. Porcupine's resetting a, tra a spell onto the field. They are now... They have a negate for the Kirin. Kirin is now negated from activating. The effect would change, that is. Yama is here. Yama Search, which the Ash Blossom can negate, which the Phantom of Ubel can negate the negate by turning it into a different effect. Mate... Maxi killed the duel. Yup, damn. Game number three, begin. Opening spirits, a really good card opener here. We're gonna be summoning our Dark Beckoning Beast, playing around a Gamma, no Gamma. Now the Ash Blossom will negate. We have negate, negate, negate a monster. We have reborn the soul rage, which will link with the monster into a little knight, into another banish. Plus we have an ash blossom. So we, with this, we have about seven disruptions. That's crazy. Let's do it. Now we can call by onto the rage, which is a ton of disruptions dealt with. Yata is going to be negated by the Apollo USA. Chain the porcupine, which the Apollo can't negate again within that same chain. That's where the Phantom of Ubel could have come into play in the game if we wanted to. She likely did not want to. We're now making the Ascending Draco Slayer. When this card is exceeds someone, you could add a Pendulum from your deck during the end phase. Looks like we're Zeusin'. Oh my Zeus. Zeus is here. Zeus activate, wipe the field. We can only do it once. Now the Apollo say, negate. But it ate up a negate. Okay, sure. What now, what now? Typhon. <laughs> so first, you Zeus, then 
You Typhon. Typhon is going to turn off nothing here, but it's going to force them to start activating some cards. We're going to call for the grave. Get rid of that soul of rage. Let's freaking go. Now, we do have two materials, so we can activate the effect twice. Not within the same turn, that is. It's a once per turn. So we're going to non-target reborn at the chamber, but we knew that they wanted to reborn the rage. So we're going to reborn a Yama instead. Yama triggers off a special summon, not just Link summon. Now we're going to activate the Typhon to spin back a monster back to the hand. Phantom of Yubel, change the effect. Now changing the effect is different than negating, which means if a card is unaffected from card effects, you could still change their effect, even though you can't negate their effect. Konami logic. We're going to add during the end phase our Bunbuku. Bunbuku. So I would think we would add in the end phase the Porcupine would be potentially something good to summon during the opponent's turn if we wanted to. But the Bunbuku is here. We have the Soul of Anguish, which could link off of the Typhon to make an Access Code Talker or Unchained Abomination. Yeah, Gia, we need a DLM Typhoon emote, please. Spirit Gates, Discard Ash, Reborn Spirit of Yubel. Yubel, search our deck for a second copy of the Nightmare Pain. Nightmare Pain, pop in Spirit of you, Bell, searching for the D Lotus. We have our normal summon ready. Unchained Abomination being triggered to take out the Cross on Designate. Yama triggering because a card we control is destroyed. Non target reborning a fiend from the grave. 5,400 damage in the field, not quite lethal yet. We're going to summon a Phantom of Yubel, pop Yubel, summon Shavara. We know that they have a Nibiru, but we have Phantom of Yubel to negate. And just like that, mate, 7,400 damage. Game three victory. Yubel taking out Magispector. Now, not 3 q I still greatly appreciate you bringing Magispector to the tournament because I felt like I learned a lot about the deck. So thank you very much, non 3 q UMC, let's get to it. Let's do it into the next match. Centurion is here. Stand up for Centurion. Centurion Primera. We are going second, unfortunately. One or one. We did not chain Maxi to play around the Gamma. We're now going to Maxi, which could then get Ash Blossomed. We would then be able to follow up with the Mulcharmy, which would then get fingered. But if you finger Mulcharmy, you could then chain a second copy of the Mulcharmy to play around an Ash and a Called By if you have double Mulcharmy and a Max C. Think about what Yu-Gi-Oh is going to be like if they don't ban Max C. They have to, right? We know where this is going. It's going to be making a Borland Dragon plus many other disruptions. Untargetable by monster effects, cannot be destroyed by battle of card effect, negate any monster on the field, cannot be responded to, can attack everything on the field. Let's go to game two. What? I, uh, Centurion Super Heavy Samurai? Huh? Wakashi? What the? Set up a Banki special summon. Banki could be negated by the Ash. We did not. We're gonna wait. We're now gonna be linking off into a Tilting Entrainment, triggering the Soul Piercer, but we didn't chain link block. Is this a mandatory? It is optional, special summon a pendulum from your hand or from your extra deck. Okay, Wakashi. Making the Centurion Auxilla. Auxilla's gonna search our deck for a Centurion card. Sure, come to us. Wakashi setting itself as a pendulum scale. All right, all right, we got Primera. And we are now pendulum summoning onto the field as we already used up our normal summon. Primera search our deck for the stand-up Centurion, which allows us to synchro during the opponent's turn. Motorbike changing its level so that we can make an Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. Reborning a level two from the graveyard. Motorbike is now back. Further show conning into our Baron de Floor. Sure, sure. Stamp Centurion is gonna activate, set up a Centurion card into our back row, Trudea, which can summon as a level eight. And it's gonna equip a Centurion into the back row, summoning itself onto the field as a level eight. We're gonna trigger the field spell, which we didn't have to, but it's something you could do during the opponent's turn. Making a Crimson Dragon. This is why the Archfiend King Calamity was banned. Gargoyle and Sense of the Grave for a Synchro is gonna return back to the hand. We're gonna Crimson Dragon right here, right now for a Blazar Dragon, I believe so. Yes, Cosmic Blazar Dragon is a solemn judgment. And is it a hard one's return? If we have multiple Blazars, I think that's multiple negates. Yup, yeah, multiple Blazar, multiple negate if we want to. Let's go, let's go. Auxilla equipping into the back row, the Primula. Now what you should know with this deck is your back row Centurions are considered to be traps. So they could special summon during the opponent's turn, triggering the field spell to synchro into another level 12. Let's see what's good. One for one, summon from the deck. We're not gonna chain Maxi, even though we had a bunch of negates for a potential Gamma. Ash, negate the Maxi. Do we negate the Ash? 
No, we don't. We're going to chain Primera to summon from the back row onto the field. We're also going to chain Trudea to summon herself onto the field as a level 8. So we got a 4 and an 8 to make a level 12. What's it going to be? Now, Primera is an effect to search the deck, which could chain link block an Ash by putting the field cell on a higher chain link. Another Blazar? Or is this the Supernova Dragon? Another Crimson first. Crimson. And then we'll see what we summon off of this Crimson. Maybe we're just waiting. We still have a Baron to Floor Negate and the Cosmic Blazar Negate. Crimson Dragon, target the Auxilla, summon from the extra deck, a Red Supernova Dragon, summoning it much more easily than, I think, Resonators. So this is when your opponent activates a monster effect or declares an attack, you could banish all of your opponent's cards. Back row monster, banish everything if they activate a monster effect. Okay. Link this up into Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon, search our deck. We're not going to want to banish the Striker Dragon, right? We're going to wait. Wait with that giant banish, especially since we still have our Blazar and our Baron to floor. Likely going to have to be negating that Triple Tactics talent. Banishing for the Red Eyes Darkness Metal. Come forth and summon Shokan into Dark. Dark could steal a Dark Monster. The Blazar could negate the summon. Was never summoned. Black Metal triggering, adding a Red Eyes Black Meteor. As we then Triple Tactics Talent, forcing out the Baron to floor. Negates. Our final disruption is the Supernova Dragon. Now, the Auxilla, I think, has an additional effect of face-up cards in your Spell and Trap Zone cannot be destroyed. So MST, no good. Cosmic Cyclone, very good. Making the Romulus. Romulus activating. We're not going to Supernova that. Chill. Grabbing the Abso Router effect to grab a rocket from the deck. Come to us, Rocket Tracer, which we could summon onto the field through the Boot Sector launch. We have not committed to our normal summon yet. That is still available. Dragon Ravine, discarding the Meteor Dragon, send from the deck. Serenir Trigger, send from the deck, our Lubellion. Normal summon not activating. Shokan into Little Knight. Isn't this the counter? Little Knight banish Supernova, Supernova, chain banish, Little Knight chain banish again? Huh? Forcing out the Supernova. Supernova, banish the entire opposing field as the Little Knight banishes herself and the Auxilla. Thus, the Supernova completely outplayed, being forced to simply banish a Dragon Ravine and nothing else. Boot Sector launch, which could reborn from the graveyard. I, I, are, are we going to lose with Centurion? What the heck is going on? Striker Dragon, let's speed this up. Striker Dragon, pop itself, add the Recharger, Recharger Trigger, which will discard to then reborn a monster from the graveyard, which is going to be the Serenir. Serenir and the Rocket Tracer into the Dispater. Dispater stealing the Red Supernova Dragon. It's now ours. Oh my gosh. What the heck? So now we could banish their entire field. Wow. 5,500 attack, wiping out the Baron to floor and uh, could not, uh, it couldn't attack directly. I, I don't understand. Did I miss something here? Cannot, cannot attack directly with what you reborn? I don't think so. Okay. SPs, of, you SP Little Knight, right, thank you. And then the Blazer comes back, which is going to be negating. The Auxilla is going to be triggering the end phase to set up a card into the back row. So because of Little Knight, we could not have attacked directly. Despite having the Supernova Dragon, if we were to chain banish, the Blazer would have then negated. All right, uh, it was pretty cool, though. I mean, uh, you chain to the Blazer to negate with the piss Dispater, though, right? Dispater would have negated the Blazer. Huh? Okay, sure. It, does Blazer banish by cost? Banish this card by cost, which then the Dispater can use the Blazer to negate the Blazer. Negate Blazer by returning Blazer back to the extra deck. But he lost the time. <laughs> so it was a time limit loss. We did have the outs. Negate Blazar with the Dispater. We could have banished the entire field. That's okay. Let's hop into game number three. We're not going to. Of course, we know better. Okay. Now, we max C. Before the Link Summon, Ash negates. And just like that, we're now going to have to... Let's speed up the combo. Move this on over a little bit. All right. Let's do it. Oh my Jesus. Negate anything. We have negate a monster. We have negate anything. So that's triple negate. 
The Dissipator does not have a negate right now, but it has destroy a monster in response to an activating. And we have a abyss deal, which is not counting as a disruption at the moment. So four disruption, and we can't target the Borland with a monster effect, and it's completely indestructible. How do we deal with it? The correct way to deal with this field. Very good, Boda. <laughs> Thank you. Centurion, not doing too well going second. Game one and game three. Game two is pretty cool, but... I guess that's how Centurion is right now at the moment. Damn.